And is that actually going to work? We now have wireless charging on this Android TV box. So Android 10, quad core CPU, four gigs RAM, 32 gig storage, Bluetooth 5, gigabit ethernet. Let's open that up. This is everything you get inside the box. Here we have the remote control. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz remote control. And as we can just hear, that means there is a small dongle inside, which we can then plug into the box. And that will then allow the remote control to communicate with that. This also has an air mouse feature. So that should make navigating around APKs a little bit easier. Next to that, we've got the standard power brick. Over here, we have a small user manual. But as we know with these Android boxes, it's pretty much a case of plug in the power, plug in the HDMI lead, and you're more or less good to go. We get the HDMI lead, and this is the actual box. So definitely get some points for originality. It doesn't look like your typical Android box. And this does have a wireless charger, which I did demonstrate at the start of this video, and that's a 10 watt charger. On the back here, we have the port. So over here, you've got your memory card slot. Next to that, we have two USB ports. We can see port one is a USB 3.0 speed, and this one is the slower USB 2.0. Here we have the gigabit ethernet. We have the HDMI port. We also have optical out, and here we have the power input. We can see that the box does have very good ventilation, so it shouldn't really heat up at all when using it. So that's the box there. Let me now plug that in, and I'll take you through the setup process. So this is the home screen of the Umikai K1 Android box. We can see it's a pretty basic layout, but there is a dedicated tile for the wireless charging feature. And we can see right now my phone is on top of the box and we can see it's currently charging. So we have dedicated tiles for the Play Store, for casting, and this does support casting to your Android phone via Miracast or to your iPhone via AirScreen. And let's go into the settings. Let's go to device preferences. Go into about. And here we can just confirm that this device is running Android 10. Okay, let's back out of that. And in terms of storage, we can see this is a 32 gig device out of which we have 23 gigs available. It's actually about 27 gigs when you get the device, but I have installed a couple of applications, including the benchmark application, just so I can complete the testing. Okay, let's back out of that. So home screen, very basic. Uh, we can go to my apps and see all of the applications installed. We can back out of that. We can go to media and see the applications installed for that category. And of course, if you want to add something, I can click on this and then just choose any application I want to put into that category. So let's add this one over here and let's just do this one. Press the back button and we can see that's now updated that particular category. Okay, let's back out of that. Let's try some 4K video on YouTube. So if I go to uh, media, Go to YouTube. Now, actually, before I start that, this remote control does come with the air mouse function. So this button down here, if I press that, we can see now I do have an air mouse. And it's really great that we can actually turn that off because this is only really suitable or needed for certain applications. So I can use that when I want to. I can press the button again, and I'll then disable the mouse. Let's open up YouTube. Now, the key thing about watching 4K videos or doing any kind of YouTube test Firstly, is perception. So this may look like it's absolutely fine. It looks pretty smooth. And we can see that I'm able to forward that and that carries on absolutely fine. But that is just perception. The real way you want to test this is bring up the stats for nerds. So if I press the select button, go to the left over here, we can see this is playing in 4K. I can click on that just to confirm that it is 2160p. Let's click on that again. If I go back to more again, and let's go to the last option. And here we have the stats for nerds. So let's click on that. Let's press the back button. And the key thing you're looking for there is where it says dropped, like how many frames were dropped. So now the frames are typically dropped because firstly, you may have some internet issues. So maybe some issues with your bandwidth, or maybe you have too many people using your internet connection. All of that could cause some frames to be dropped. Next up, maybe your CPU or GPU is just not powerful enough to decode a 4K video stream. Now in this example, we can see I've left the video playing for a couple of minutes and it's only dropped one frame out of uh, 3930. So, so that's really the real test you want to do to see can this box actually handle 4K content on YouTube. Okay, let's back out of that. So here we have the second video. And once again, we can confirm that this is playing in 4K at 30 frames per second. So far, we've uh, processed uh, 501 frames and we've not dropped a single one. 
and we can just playing absolutely fine looks really nice really sharp and let's just fold that a bit and we can see we just folded that video we processed over 1900 frames and again not a single drop frame on this box so i think it's fair to say that in terms of 4k playback we can comfortably play that back on this box so i've just plugged in my usb3 stick into the usb3 port and let's just open up one of these applications over here and let's just go for this one let's try some of these videos from there okay looking good looking smooth Okay, looks fine let's just try one more yep so 4k playback from usb or from youtube no real issues on this device okay let's back out of that so let's try some gaming on the umikai k1 android box i've just used my standard xbox one controller and connected that to the box over bluetooth so we can definitely confirm that bluetooth is working fine on this box okay let's click on start i mean of course you're never going to buy a box like this to do some serious gaming but for basic, you know, Android games, basic, you know, uh, puzzle games and arcade type games, it should run fine on this box. And after this test, I will do some quick emulation tests to see how does it handle PSP or even Dreamcast. Okay, so we got some zombies over there, so I can start shooting them. Take that. Uh, how do I zoom in? I can like that. Yeah, I can do that. But we said it's working absolutely fine, guys. So your basic Android games, even though this does actually look quite nice. They should, uh, they should be fine on this box. Okay, let's try some emulation. So here we are with some PSP emulation, and this is uh, Ridge Racer 2. Let's see how that performs. Uh, how do I change the view? Okay, I prefer it like this, okay. Get close to the action. Uh, okay, so it seems to be performing okay. Um, I think the sound is a little bit uh, choppy, so maybe struggling with that. But again, you're never going to buy a, a box like this or a cheap box like this to do some serious gaming. It's really just for the odd game here or there, like some basic uh, arcade games or basic uh, games from the Play Store. But emulation on old school consoles like 8-bit and 16-bit, that should be uh, absolutely fine on this. Uh, let's just change the view again. Just so we can see how good my driving is. And there you go, straight into the rock. <laughs> and lastly, let's try some golf. Ooh, look at that. And can we get a birdie? There you go. Free tech, take that. <laughs> Only because I know he likes playing golf. Okay, so basic gaming, no problem. Old school emulation, also no problem. Now in terms of official applications like Netflix and Prime Video, both of them do actually work absolutely fine on this box but you are limited to 480p. And to be fair guys, if you do want to watch these kind of applications or these official streaming applications, then I would not recommend a box like this. I would always recommend an official device like the 4K Fire Stick or even the Tiva Stream 4K if you don't like the Amazon ecosystem. Both those devices have all the correct certification and they will allow you to watch Netflix and Prime Video in 4K. But most people buy these Android boxes because they're very easy to customize. You can easily expand the storage. They normally come with a lot of storage. And of course your side loaded or your third party applications run absolutely fine on them. And in the N228 benchmark, the Umakai K1 gets a score of 52. 2992 which i think is fairly average for this particular cpu okay let's back out of that okay so wrapping this up what are my thoughts on the umikai k1 android box well on the positive um, it does have that very unique feature where you can charge your wirelessly charge your phones on top of it we saw that 4k videos from youtube play absolutely fine and also from usb it is running android 10 we also get the gigabit ethernet and also bluetooth 5 so pretty good features there but on the negatives i'd say that cpu is not great at all this is actually the first time i've tested an all winner 616 cpu and i would not personally recommend that the device also only has two usb ports so as soon as i plug my remote control in i've already lost one of those ports the box can get quite noisy under load and of course netflix and prime video will only play at 480p's so that's pretty much it for this video guys if you want to know more about the box or purchase it i will leave a link in the video description and i do also have a 10 percent discount code if you guys want to check that out so do let me know what you think about this box and i'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon thanks